Welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. Today I'm working on cutting up some t-shirts to make these t-shirt balls for rug making, whether you do hooking, you do braiding or latch or whatever, and you need some fresh material. I have these t-shirt balls that I cut up out of t-shirts, right? And I roll them into balls like this, right? So I have a huge fresh supply of a nice new color, super inexpensive, super easy to do. But when you get your t-shirts, whether they're shirts that are stained or outgrown or whatever, um, you want to cut them up so they ha you get the most meat off of them, right? You want to use as much as possible. So I'm going to show you how I cut mine up to get the most, every little bit out of them, to be able to make as big a ball as possible for your future rug-making project. So, for example, these are shirts that we got at a Goodwill recently. Tons and tons of nice colors. I wash them just to be sure there's, you know, nothing gross happening there. And I take out the shirt, whatever it is, whether it's got a print or whatever on it, I just want to figure out what lines to cut so that I have the most material uh, possible. So for example, I come down into the seam and I'm going to cut right against the seam. And I'm not like insane about this, right? I'm not going to like uh, cry myself to sleep if there's like an eighth of an inch left over on the bone here. But I'm going to go as close as I can right up to the armpit. I'm just cutting on seams. You're not going to want to hook with your seam anyway. So I'm cutting away the sort of features, in this case, the sleeves. And I want to take both of these off. I want to take off things like collars, cuffs, uh, those kinds of features, because they're not going to come in handy to us as rug hookers. And I'm going to end up with, if you're also a person who sews, I'm going to end up with the original pattern pieces, which is always interesting and fun to look at. So for example, like when you're looking at a sleeve like this, a short sleeve, this is a little cap sleeve, you might be thinking, well, how worthwhile could that possibly be? It's such a small amount of material. It's actually a large amount of material. It's, it's, it's not infinite, but it's not, it's not something you would want to throw out, right? So even one little sleeve like this, I'm going to cut it up here, right, following the seam. This particular shirt has a little bit of a cuff on it, and I definitely don't want the cuff. That is going to take away from what I can use. So I'm just going to cut the, cut, the cuff off. And if I was really kind of desperate for this grape purple color, I would probably take the cuff, cut it in half, unfold it, and use, use the whole thing. And I might, I might yet do that. Um, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to cut the spare pieces off that are not flat and are, are uh, sewn and not going to help us at all. So even a small piece like this, when I look at what the pattern piece looks like, I want to be smart about, oh, this also has elastic in there. You see that? So that's a bit problematic. So that's also a bit of a surprise. There is a piece of elastic. Okay. Well, that's a bit of a game changer. So I would probably choose if this happened, it's, it's fused on, right? So I can't do anything about that. I don't think it's just going to, no, it's not. That's a bit of a problem. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to keep it handy in case I run out of this color and I feel like I need it, but that is going to really detract from my ability to be able to use this piece. So in the case of the grape shirt, I'm going to leave the sleeves and I'm going to come back over to the body. And I'm just going to, I'm just doing some quick cutting here. I'm usually a little bit more tidy. I just want to get either the back or the front off, knowing that we can't use those sleeves. Had we been able to use those sleeves, I would use the same principle I'm about to use with this piece and run kind of a labyrinth. If you've ever walked a labyrinth or a maze, that kind of configuration uh, right up through it. But let's do this part first. Now, all jersey, right, is cotton, and um, many t-shirts have a stretch um, aspect to them, so they're partially synthetic. And when that's the case, you just want to be aware when you're using synthetics because they perform differently than 100% cotton. So, for example, if you're making a rug and you are using what you think is all jersey, but some of it is stretchy and some of it's non-stretch cotton like a flannel, you want to be aware of that because if you're, like, for example, putting it in the washing machine, they're going to wash differently because they have different content. Anything with synthetic content is going to perform differently. doesn't mean you can't use it. It means you need to be aware of it, and it makes a lot of sense to pre-wash your stuff. Once you pre-wash it, it should take care of all of those big questions about shrinkage because if it is going to shrink, you want it to be uniform shrinkage. You don't want it to be unexpected shrinkage because it could pull and pucker the rug when it comes out of the wash. 
So we know that this is stretchy, not just that elastic part, but the whole thing. Now, my pattern piece looks like this. This is a size 2X from Fashion Bug. It, I just happened to pick this t-shirt first, but it's always best if you're shopping for shirts, go to the section like the extra, 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 extra large first because they cost the same at the thrift store. So you might as well have the most material possible if you're going to spend whatever, $4.99 on a shirt, right? So what I want to do to make the most out of this is cut it like a labyrinth. And I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to go up like this and not hit the edges. So... This is, this is how I do it to get one piece out of it, right? Think about like artists who work in wood who cut like something beautiful out of one piece of wood. I've got a cuff down here and I wanna cut that off before we get started because then I've got 100% meat. This is like a little bit of fat right here. And again, you can keep these bits and pieces because you can use them for projects. It's just you might not want it in your skein, right? Because it is, it's got these stitches in it and those are not going to go away. So I'm going to come up like this. And it's not perfectly straight, but you know, it absolutely makes no difference whether you're hooking or braiding. If there's like little notches off of it because you're not perfectly straight and steady, absolutely doesn't matter. So you see how I did that one strip here? I'm not going to cut the strip off because that's going to leave me with a tiny little bit of material I need to attach to something else with like bow tie, you know, um, attach or something. I don't want to detach it. I want to keep it as one piece. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. I'm going to be doing this right up the whole body of the shirt. And it is a bit like a labyrinth, right? You just don't exit. And then I'm going to come back around here. And if you're not on camera like I am, you can do this a lot easier by moving around the table. I'm just going to continue not cutting and doing sort of a zigzag all the way up through the body of the shirt. So we're going to pause for just a minute while I finish this. And then I'm going to come back to you with this accordion piece. So you can see when I come to angles like this, right, we're heading into the armpit. I'm going to still want to use this, but I'm making it a little bit thinner because I still want to use this and this is all fine. Usually I go for about an inch wide, whether I'm doing braiding or hooking, but sometimes when I come into little corners like that, I still want to use them and it just means that that one little piece is going to be more narrow. So naturally, and obviously when I get to the top of the garment, there is going to be a bit of trickiness here, right? Because the shape is changing and it's tapering up. So it's becoming more narrow. I'm not working with a box shape anymore and I just have to make decisions as I go along about whether I want to slice things in half or whether I want to keep going. Now when I get to the very top, the shoulders, I've really got some decisions to make. So you could keep going zigzag, keep going row, row by row like we were, or you could work more like this. I tend to start going around the edges and working in. And does it matter if there are curves here? It really doesn't. It really doesn't. I'm just looking for a piece of material that's about an inch. Sometimes it's going to be more, sometimes it's going to be less. And I'm just going round and round kind of concentrically until I get to a point where I just can't go anymore. So, and you'll see you do hit that point and every shirt is different and the way you're cutting it is different too. So you can see I'm getting to be like right at the bitter end here. So what I'll probably do, because I'm really a sort of thrifty, thrifty cutter, I think I really can't go too much further with this. I am gonna cut through here and I'll come around here and I can make decisions, see that cut off. So we're right at the end. You can make decisions as you go. I'm gonna let go of this little piece and I'm gonna roll this up and show you what it looks like. So I've got the just the half of the shirt, right? I just have the back of the shirt. I still have the two sleeves with a little bit of elastic that I can choose to butcher if I need that material, but I also have the whole front of the shirt. So I'm just showing you once it's all cut up, sort of labyrinth style, like a little, like a snake, right? That just keeps going. I just start rolling it like I would any other material. And I make a nice ball out of it. And when I do the rest of it, the rest of the grape shirt, the front piece, I'm certainly going to add it to this because this is all one color. And I usually put all my purples together so that I know purple goes with purples and the pinks and whatever. And when I'm starting a new project, I can reach for this little ball. And you can see it makes quite a lot of material. It was a size extra large and it's only half of the bodice. It's not even the whole bodice. And we're still going strong. We're going quite strong. Oh, so it broke. So that's okay. I must have cut something too slim and that's fine. You can attach it or tie it or whatever, but 
I'm just going to do that for now. So that's just half. That's a lot of material to work with, whether you're doing your hooking or I've been doing a lot of braiding with this, but whatever kind of rug making you're doing, everything is a rag rug to me. And this is a rag at this point. So this is perfect material and super inexpensive, inexpensive material for what you're going to need. So you should be looking at your draws and pulling apart all that old stuff that's already ratty and doing this with it instead of like throwing it in the trash. I will see you next time at Ribbon Candy Hooking.